Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about removing details from uh, miniatures. So this came about because of a question that happened in a recent uh, hobby cheating Q&A. Uh, somebody asked me about removing the detail from things. Uh, I also saw recently that um, Richard Gray, who's working on like the Ogroid Myrmidon, uh, had removed some of the details from the shield, the sort of extra accoutrement that's on there, so that he could do freehand on it. And I'll say this is one of my favorite things to do as well. Uh, many years ago when I did a Stormcast army, I had removed everything from their shields and sanded them down and such so I could put the freehand markings of the individual units on each one. So that was, this is my little wolf pack of hunters here. Uh, so the question is, how do we get from this where we have all this sculpted detail to something where it's uh, flat and even and we're able to uh, paint over it or, or add our own touches to it? Uh, well, there's lots of different options we have here at our disposal, and I'm going to kind of walk you through my process today. So depending on the nature of the the raised stuff, depending on how big it is, you may be able to get some of it gone with just your clippers or your nippers, right? Depending on the kind of tools you have. Uh, and some of this certainly you could you could try to take off with this, although as you can see, it's just not real effective, right? It's even with the, the tinier, more precise ones, the reality is is that a lot of this stuff is just too thin, too small, too close to really peel it off. Like I can get some of these big pieces off and certainly your, your clippers are always a good place to start if you can. But some of this stuff just isn't gonna come up with, with these things. So good tool if you've got it. Option the second, of course, is something like our hobby knife, right? And this is probably where a lot of us go uh, because certainly it's a lot easier. We can we can scrape into them and there. We can just kind of come along and start pulling off the pieces. Now, what I'll say about using something like this is one, this is a great way to absolutely uh, cut your thumb right open. I've done it many times. My thumbs are very scarred from it. And two, you have to be really, really careful with this. Not just because, you know, please, 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 anytime you're wielding a knife, be extremely careful. But two, you have to be careful with the mini as well, because you need to be taking away tiny little pieces at a time. This is pretty lengthy and involved, and frankly, if I had to just etch off with a knife every one of these, I would probably lose my mind. So, when, the, when neither of those work like a Stormcast shield, like we're making a little bit of progress there, but it's taking too long it's time to bring in the big guns. So here we have a Dremel. This is a 7700. You can order a similar thing offline. Um, it comes with multiple kinds of uh, tips, both sanding and polishing. This is one of the sanding ones. They're very coarse, very high, uh, or very low grit count, I should say. That's it, put it on high and then we go. So uh, what do we do here? Well. We're gonna take the shield and you wanna make sure that you have a real good handle on this thing. Because when you start working with it, it's gonna to wanna to jump. And then we just slowly grind away the relevant elements. And you can see how much quicker it comes off there. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing that. Basically what I'm doing is just slowly working up and down the thing. Uh, I'm not gonna show you all of that on camera. One, because this thing is real loud and that can't be a pleasant sound to listen to. And two, because you don't really need to, to watch me do it. It's just literally doing what you just saw me do, but slowly up and down the thing. So I'll continue that for a moment and be right back. All right, so there you go, all nice and removed. Um, you do want to be really careful with the Dremel because if the shield jumps out of your hand and you hit your own finger, it's going to really hurt. Sometimes you'll get little plastic pieces because obviously it gets them kind of hot, uh, which is another tip. You want to be working it slowly and then removing it, working it slowly and then removing it, working it slowly and then removing it. Don't sit there and bury the tool into the thing. Don't sit there and take your Dremel and just be like, and really like work it in. You're just going to carve way too much. It's going to, you're going to melt the plastic because of the heat of the friction and you'll get the tool sunk in there. So nice, little, careful 
strokes. Then I take my X-Acto blade and I just kind of give it a good scraping. And what I'm doing here is just removing any big chunks. Oftentimes when you work with the Dremel, it'll leave behind these little plastic, I don't know, roll up pieces, I guess is what I would call it. Uh, so that's just, you scrape them off. That's just the easiest way to go. Now we've got a smooth-ish, <laughs> but rough surface. Uh, so we don't want, we don't want that to paint over. That's not anywhere near where we want to be yet. So now we're going to grab ourselves something like a sanding stick. Um, these come in lots of different versions. You can also just use regular old sandpaper that you cut down a size, whatever you like. Um, this is a coarse and a medium. Of course, you can get sanding sticks and all sorts of different things. But I'm going to start here with the coarse and just give it a nice little up and down. It, this is nice because it's rounded and it meets right up into the... Sorry, I'm probably shaking the camera there because my hands are resting on the table. Uh, right up into the the roundness of the shield. Here we're just, we start with the the, the lowest, uh, the most coarse grain of the sandpaper. That way, again, we can just get rid of these nice big chunks, just make some good progress and get it down there. Easy peasy. Already, it's feeling a lot smoother, right? So now we go up to the medium grit. And guess what? We repeat this process again. Sometimes you got to work with this stuff for a little while. Just to make sure you really get all of it off. You want it nice and even. So we just sit there and we make sure we get these nice, short, repeated strokes of it there. And now, I mean, you'll be able to feel by the touch of your hand if it's getting smoother, right? So now we're really getting somewhere. Great. Awesome. Next up, we can go to something like this. So automotive stores sell really, really high grit sandpaper, 400, 800, 1200. So here I'm going to take a nice little chunk of my 400 out. Curl it up on my fingertip. and just really work that in there over and over again. So this is the kind of thing I use to sand stuff down when I want it to be really, really smooth. Because this is a very, very high grit sandpaper. And it will do a nice job of making a real smooth surface. So now, we're feeling nice and buttery smooth, but we don't have to stop there. We can finish it out. Let's grab some of our 800, which is really high. Again, same thing. We'll grab a little corner here. You can see how even the dust gets kind of removed at that point because we're getting so, so high with the grit. There's what we took off it. The next thing I do is I grab a little touch of water and I just run it over there. Because sometimes the dust will get down in the cracks and stuff and obscure your vision. Yeah. So this is just a good way to test and see how you actually look. So pretty smooth, not too shabby. But we have these cuts up here that happened. You know, probably from either how we had to angle the the Dremel or whatever like that. So what ha what do you do when you're when you're in a situation like that? How do you handle these last little pieces up here? Well, there's a couple different options. So one thing you can do is you can go ahead and prime the thing and then sand it back down again. That's certainly a possibility. The other option is you can take something like this. So this is our this is plastic putty. You can also use um, perfect putty is another one. There's there's lots of them out there. Doesn't really matter. Uh, any brand will do. So we're gonna take just a little little bit of that. We'll use an extra war cry card that I happen to have sitting around here. Take a little bit of that. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a nice wet brush, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and mix that putty with a lot of water, just kind of water it down. So we get that kind of goopy mix. Okay, something like that. We don't want any of that those chunks anymore. Then we're gonna take our little goopy mix and we're basically just gonna paint over the shield. Okay, kind of in everywhere I want it to be. Make sure it doesn't flow down in any cracks or anything like that, where it's just gonna sit there. Now, the key is then we just let that dry. So this only takes a few minutes to dry. So I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we finish it off. Easy peasy. All right, so everything's dry. You can see how, because it was thin, it settled into those recesses. Uh, now we just go back to some of our 800 grit or whatever the high grit you're using is. And we just give it a nice light sand. Any kind of areas where it built up high, it'll be scraped off and you'll basically even it all out. Oop. And there we go. Now we've got a nice even shield and you can see like where it pulled off there, that's okay because it, that's where it's, <laughs> that's where it wasn't depressed and it was a nice high flat part sunk into all the rest of those and we're good to go. You can repeat this, by the way, multiple times um, if it's still not good. And after you prime it, you can just grab your good old friend gloss varnish or, or something like that. You prime it, if you still see a small uh, area that's not quite flat, after you prime, you just give it a nice little solid coat of gloss varnish, done and dusted again, it'll sink into there. And once again, you can go and sand it. It really just depends on like how perfect you're trying to get it. Um, because the reality is, is that, you know, if it was an army, I would, and it was just like one of 30, 40, 50, 80 guys with shields, I'd probably call this a day and feel pretty good about it. If it was, you know, some competition piece where I needed it to be perfect, um, sure, I would sit there and work a lot harder on it. So, you know, you kind of set your own desire of where you want to stop. But there you go. That's, uh, that's how you get rid of detail. Uh, so just a recoup, a recover, real, whatever, just to go over it again real fast to summarize. That's what I'm looking for. If you can start with your clippers or your nippers to remove the bulk pieces. Uh, if you've got other small areas, of course, you can always grab the hobby knife and use that. But your good old friend, Mr. Dremel is going to be your best bet. If you've got a big piece you need to, to get rid of, just again, remember you want to be very careful with it. Uh, you don't want to chew deeply into it, so you need to still move very slowly over the top. Once that's down, get yourself a couple different versions of sanding sticks or sandpaper or something like that. Start from your coarsest and then go up slowly uh, into uh, higher and higher grit until you get to something nice and smooth. When you're then trying to repair any damage at the end, something like your plastic putty or your perfect putty uh, watered down is then your next bet to finish it off one final sand and boom you're done jobs are good and so there you go that shield's now ready to be attached to uh, a storm cast so he can be painted and we can give him his own sort of moniker or whatever you know whichever of the uh the chambers are most appropriate for him so there you go uh, if you liked that, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got questions, drop those below, as well as any suggestions for future videos. Always appreciate that. Uh, but as always, I thank you very much for watching this one, uh, and we'll see you next time.